evening, everyone. Here we are, mm. back again. Mage League Season 1. We've got Dota Boys 2 versus Registered Night Stalkers, uh, joined by Rico, Mina, Slug, and Tyler. Gentlemen. Hi. Hello. Hi, hey, dude. Oh. What up? Bit of, a, bit of an impromptu cast here. I don't think that anyone here knew the game was happening until like an hour and a half ago, so... Uh, it's a bad bunch. Yeah, luckily none of us have lives. <laughs> well, speak for yourself, Slug, but uh, it's looking pretty lively here. Um, yeah, so many, so many friends. So many. My friends. sister is visiting right now from out of town, and so I just have her downstairs. <laughs> the sacrifices you make to cast this with us, Rico, it's admirable. Yeah, I sure care you know. about this league. Dota two boys opening with offlaner bands. Yeah, really like yeah, really focusing on those, which is quite interesting to me. Two uh, really good what, bands. Though. I would say, I mean, really nice talkers cool. definitely seen like definitely been favoring the door, but I actually haven't seen them play Bristol yet. So, um, interesting. You know, wondering if that's just you know they're scared of the hero, they didn't want to risk it. Or... Radiance up, banning time. Yeah, all pretty in line with um bands we'd see at TI. Um. Maybe the Wish yeah, Doctor really ban a little unexpected, though. I mean, it's yeah, it's a, a effective there. support at our MMR, but um, it would be a Ricky or Funky. But yeah, for the most part, pretty meta bands. Um, maybe not what you'd exactly expect to see at TI. I mean, um, kind of a bit, you know, a couple of heroes missing uh, that you'd normally expect to see see banned out, but we're ten seconds out. Overall, I think both teams are kind of uh, if that's what's shooting in into the dark, right? I don't, think, I don't think either team's too hindered by these fans. All right, die your turn. <laughs> but it was slammed the first pick in the bucket. That's um, it's very impressive to me. Like, is anyone here familiar with either of these teams? Like, what kind of signature heroes they play? Or, um, I mean, <laughs> we've watched them. I say we've watched both teams, but and uh, you know, I mean. The majors have played Wrench and Ice Talkers, and uh, Tyler's team, the Switch Tripper, is playing against Dota Boys. Um, we see the Primal Beast come out, which uh, isn't too so. Uh, it, uh, isn't too surprising. Um, they, 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 they they've done some work on Primal before, I think, with the Wrench and Ice Talkers. I think Ten seconds left. Some, well, uh, quite eight. a bit of a comfort pick for them. Um, Five seconds. Uh, I'm not sure about the Invoker on Dota Boys too. I don't I don't remember if they would played it previously or not. Uh, there's been a lot of the good players in this league, so it's definitely possible. I just don't quite remember if they did. Are we assuming that this is going to be a mid invoker? Or is there a potential for a flex pick here? I, mean, I would imagine it's a mid invoker. Um, he like for the most part, mid invoker is kind of the, the matter of since the way the hero was changed. So I don't think it's I don't think it's unplayable as a four. Um, We're starting in five. But I, I definitely haven't seen him major league yet, so. The Doctor did play uh, right. Invoker in uh, in one of their games okay. against Witch River and was probably their best player in that game, so uh, I'm not surprised to see him pick it up here. Mm -hmm. In that case, I mean, yeah, but pretty solid first for them if they're comfortable with it. Uh, I mean, lading Invoker into Primal, uh, assuming that there's Primal mid. Uh, I don't think either hero is too sad about that matchup. Uh, it should be pretty, pretty good farm for both of them. Uh, you can't really go aggressive on Primal because of the cold stuff on Invoker, and um, obviously Primal's a bit too chunky for Invoker to really uh, threaten him too much. Um, interesting set of bands from Dota Boys here, banning out Sniper and Nurse. I mean, I know a lot of you know people in Mage League aren't the biggest fan of the Sniper in general. Um, that's what, that's, uh, no, he's a dog um, shit hero and he can stay out of Mage League. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it just, you know, it forces you to play a certain game. Um, you know, it really kind of, mm -hmm. that one hero pick, like, forces you to, like, have these, like, crazy gap close, which you could argue you might have a bit with the um, Primal Beast already, yeah. but... You know, one of the values of Invoker is how much utility and how much control an Invoker can put out in a fight. So if you're um, trampling around, you know, there could be an Ice Wall, there could be a Cold Snap, there could be a Tornado, there could be an EMP pulling you a certain direction. So, um, you know, I wouldn't call it a counter to Primal Beast, 
but it certainly um, inhibits the primal's ability to just stomp around a, a team fight doing whatever he pleases. Ten seconds. Well, the Slife was banned by the team without primal. Um, Five but I mean, I agree with everything you said. Uh, I, I think they're like they're not likely to pick primal. Uh, to pick. pick the sniper on Dota boys. Uh, okay. And also, yeah, they they have to. You have to be very specific to deal with it. So, I think it, it it's not fun for drafters, but really. I see this Rubik pick coming out in response to the Chikiro. Um I know that me and Joe experienced how stressful that can be to be on the Jakiro's <laughs> team against a Rubik. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're pretty happy sealing all three of Chikiro's spells. I mean, you know, I think the worst one to steal is probably Breathe Fire, which is, funnily enough, normally the one you max is Jakiro. Um, you know, Rubik obviously gets a really broken stun in, Mac in, in Ice Bath, and Macro Fire is a pretty easy just to kind of throw out all. Uh, once you steal it, so I think you're pretty happy playing into honestly both of these heroes, right? I think Rubik isn't too unhappy stealing most of Primal spells, I think, other than the uh, uproar. I think he's Rubik's not too unhappy. Stealing. I mean, Trample can be a bit weird, depends on who you're using it on, um, but can also be very powerful on Rubik uh, just to get a little bit of extra damage out. You know, throw out a Trample, steal a new spell, move on. Um, Do you think the Rubik pick here is? strong enough to sort of change how night stalkers are going to be picking the rest of their heroes or do you think um, they might have a game plan and just sort of proceed as usual i think there's a couple heroes you want to avoid right like the vengeful spirits you know the heroes that have really broken spells um but for the most part i think i think we're, we're in a we're in a bracket of dota where i think it's more important to pick heroes you're comfortable with them to worry about what Ruby's going to be stealing Dyer's choice. Let's give him a second. Uh, end up going for a, a Dazzle. Um, I'm assuming this is a support Dazzle. I, th I think Registered Night Stalkers have picked it before. Uh, I could be wrong in that. Um, there definitely has been some support Dazzle played in, in Major League. I don't remember which, which teams are picking it up. Uh, um, not from RNS. Okay. I know Juvie played it on uh, Super Good. Um, but I think this hero does a lot. I think Grave is um, Five you know, frustrating ability to play into. Uh, but also just the, uh, the Miner's Armor from from the continual heals can be very frustrating to play into, especially with the the ult laying dazzle how like, giving dazzle a lot of options for item builds that can be quite quirky. Um I do like the CK pick here too though, because I mean Dazzle obviously is gonna be doing seconds. some minus armor with heal bombs, the CK illusions, you can just pull yeah. someone in and they just Five get seconds. blown blown up. Yeah no I agree. I think um I think CK in general is a really strong hero right now. Um yeah, right. if if the if Dota boys uh, leave a tombstone unguarded, CK can quite happily clean it up with with his main hero and his illusions. Um, so uh, I, I think uh, this what well, this axe counter pick is uh, pretty good against CK. I don't think it's necessarily uh, an unplayable matchup for CK seconds. either. So well, and it also gives you uh, an opportunity to ignore the shallow grave with Five the axe dunk as well, yeah. right? So Three, though yeah. um, you know it's not uh, a perfect oh. counter to the CK. It, it does counter at least in part of the dazzle as well so you know partial combo here partial combo there um not a bad yeah, no, pickup at all I mean, I mean that's a good uh a good a good sight into this axe pick i think it yeah gives a lot of uh, options um i don't think it is. i actually don't think it does too much into the the other two heroes but i think for the most part when you're picking axe you're picking it as a as a carry counter and i think into ck it's fine and as you say I mean, it gives you a lot of options not having to worry too much about the grave yeah, that said, the Axe is going to struggle in the laning phase, be it the Jakira or the Dazzle support in the lane with against the Axe. I mean, yeah. just uh, the beatdown of the slows and the damage over time on the Axe is, is not a very favorable thing for the Axe to play into. Mm -hmm. I think the Axe is very unhappy laning into the Dazzle, um, pretty unhappy laning into the Jakiro. Um, I'm hoping for his sake that he has the, the Rubik laning with him and not the Undying. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's definitely going to be a rough lane. I mean, CK in general is also a pretty strong laner. Hits pretty hard, so isn't isn't that Five upset seconds. when you end, end up spinning back on him. Um, also has a lot of sustain really? with the with the crit on CK. So maybe not too uh, too upset getting spun on in general. So yeah, I think, yeah. Oh. Last picks are we looking here for Dota Boys and RNS? Good question. Um, Dota Boys need some very heavy physical seconds. damage. Um, I'd love to see PA yeah. is still in the pool. Um, PA can Five absolutely seconds. do work. You know, delete Three. the Dazzle before the, the Dazzle can even get a spell off in a team fight. Yeah. Um, 
I think it appears a little awkward into the CK, but I guess you could you could argue that maybe you just leave it to the Invoker and the Axe to manage the CK. The PA's job is to clean up the supports and, and make the fight easier that way. Um, they have previously run with the PA, which is uh, so I think yeah, they might be thinking is... about it. They've done mm -hmm. Gyro, they've done Lifestealer. I think either of those would be yeah. fine. Lifestealer will be okay. I don't think he like, matches up crazy well into CK, uh, but I think he's fine. I think Sven is probably the best carry into CK right now. Uh, they're going drow. Interesting. Um, not sure I mean, how... That does give them some tower push. It definitely helps them if, you know, if they, I mean, if they can win these fights, you know, obviously, yeah, they can slaughter towers with the drow. Um, I, I'm not sure how drow matches up into CK. It's a weird matchup. Um, you know, she has the axe to get a bit of, a, bit of AoE damage Five for the seconds. illusions. Yeah, I worry about the reality rift and the onslaught into the drow. Yeah, um, you I know, like the drow is gonna have a rough time with that. You can hurricane pike. You know, it it off in part, but I I feel like there is a good amount of gap close on RNS that the drow is really gonna have to be careful where she places herself in these team fights. Um, I think there's great damage potential there, and like an AOE silence against um a team that. You know, you've got a lot of right click coming out of the the Chaos Knight, but the other three heroes really want to get their spells off. So, um, I think the Drow's positioning could. Well, I think to a certain extent, the CK also really needs to get his spells off. Right? I don't think the CK mm -hmm. just jungle two right click things if he isn't able to reality rift them. So, there's an argument that the the silence onto the CK and his you know horde of illusions could be also, very impactful. Arnes is gonna have to get past a couple of pretty tanky heroes with the Axe on dying Invoker. There's always going to be the counter initiate and Rubik has a little bit of save there as well. If uh, fast on those fingers, I mean, I feel like the biggest concern for me with this dropping is just this primal, like Welcome marching through the entire museum and just kind of getting into the house space. Um, and revenge huh. pick up on this. Do you think this is a mid dazzle? Maybe uh, uh, it's a mid dazzle, a mid primal, and an off venge or something. Looks like a support venge. I don't remember who on Registrar Nightstalker plays mid. Uh, it's looking like... I feel like it might be a mid-dazzle. Well, that's Let exciting. Let me double check from previous games, but I'm pretty sure that's the mid player. Uh... Um... That means we're going to have the Primal in the offlane, then. G Dollar Hater is the... Yeah, G Dollar Hater. The that's the mid player, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So mid dazzle. I mean, I'm a big fan of mid dazzle. I think as a, a mid dazzle can can absolutely control the game on their own. Um, and I guess into this enemy team, it's a very good mid dazzle game. Um, there's a couple things you have to be careful of, uh, mostly like axe call and the drow silence. But the drow silence is less of an issue as the game goes on. You can be able to get a lot of purges on dazzle. Um, I think Rubik lift is mildly annoying, but not too stressful. Axe call on the other hand can be a pretty long duration stun that can oh maybe catch this this. Puck-esque hero out. Should we do a quick vote on who do we think won the draft? I think that Dyer um, have, mm. have the advantage here. I, I really like the Bedazzle. I really like the P1CK. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of their draft. I just don't like the, the Drow all that much. So uh, have we I'm, seen a drow? I'm leaning towards Arnus. Leaning to uh, I believe this is the first draw. Are you landed on Joe? Alright, get ready. Yeah, I'm favorable for the Dire, you know, and I was mentioning all the gap close that the Drow has to avoid. Um, we've got the Venge swap now as well, so lots of things to just pull this Drow out of position and pick her off early in fights. I mean, this, the Axe and the Undying are going to really have to beef up and stand in front um, to give Drow the space that she needs to position herself well in these fights. Um, I'm favorable to Dire's draft, but I don't think... Um, you know, just having a, an advantage draft is enough to win you the game in Mage League. Yeah. One of the things I love about it. So, um, excited to see how this one plays out either way. I'm going to go the other direction. I've uh, experienced how awful playing against a Ruby can be in. <laughs> you know, they, they picked that bench, you know, with very strong spells, exactly what you brought up earlier, Mina. What you probably might not want to pick to, to a Rubik. So I, I'm going to put some faith in this hero and uh, think that he's going to tear this other team apart. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a radiant boy. I'm a radiant boy here. Axe gets so big, they can't get to Drow, man. And you, you know, once he gets that shard, CK is not really going to be hitting for a whole lot. 
I mean, sure. That is definitely. Yeah, a lot uh, of it also is who's starting the fights, right? Killers. Like, I think it's easier for Dyer to start the fights and it go well, but somehow rating is huge and they're the ones starting all the fights. I, I, I guess that's a good question. Like, how much work is this act going to do for the Raider team, right? If right. the axe is able to, to find heroes and, and and grab them at the start of fights, then, then it's a good chance that, you know, maybe CK gets blown up before he's even able to all, you know, maybe they get a lead early. Um, this, the, you get one, I mean, that, I guess that's one of the big weaknesses of Dyer right now is they have a, a somewhat slow draft. Um, Dazzle as a mid laner is incredibly slow, takes, you know, a good 15, 20 minutes to really come online. Um, he also went export too, so he's going to have a tough time doing a Dazzle, right? Like, the only thing, it's that whole thing of Cold Snap Ford Spirits when he goes on you like that, but you see the first level right here, he's zoning him out. And that, that's all being a little over eager, having uh, lost the poison, plus still trading harass. I don't think you would want to do that too much on Dazzle. No. Uh, you want to be taking your advantageous trades with poison touch, so you got to be a little careful. First blood, First blood already. Yeah, yeah, I managed to, 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 to take the Jakiro out. The uh, problem was looking to get a return kill, but um, went for the level one uproar. I'm not, I'm, I'm not too much of a pro player. I, I have a big. I, I don't really like level one uproar. I think it slows the down a lot because it doesn't give many options. For them. I've seen it a lot. I have seen it a lot. I have seen it a lot lately. Yeah, level one transport is it does nothing. Unless you're way faster than the, than the enemy. Well, yeah, but what about level one onslaught? Level one onslaught could be used for, you know, last hitting, could be used for, for having favorable trades. It's, I mean, it's 90 damage. It's fine. Yeah, it's generic. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's. It depends, I suppose, what you really can do. I personally am not a fan of the, the, the early passive. I, mean, I think it slows down your hero. Like, like cause right now, now he's level 2, right? He's not level 2 trample. Like, he's at you said where trample on his own is kind of funky and hard to use. Um... Invoker going low. Ooh, gets Ooh, picked guess, off from Poison down with a dash Is that something that should be happening, Mina? You've had some experience with the Sekiro. Uh, I think the general dazzle against range heroes, like, you can be a bit obnoxious, but for the most part, it should be, a, like, a relatively even matchup. Um, when, they, when they're ranged, they can kind of just, uh, play it safe, let the, let the poison tick off, maybe one of the last hit here and there because of it, but, um, overall, you shouldn't really be dying against the dazzle as a range hero. I think melee heroes, it's, a, it's an unplayable lane. Uh, you just get, you take so much damage from poison touch, you can never really come near the lane. Um, but, uh, as a range hero, I, I it's pretty playable. Maybe this is uh, one of those situations where Min Invoker hasn't had as much experience playing against the Dazzle and didn't quite respect yeah. Dazzle. When the, when the patch came out, which made Dazzle pretty strong, um, I was playing it quite early just because I, I, I saw it and I thought I was interested. Um, a lot of people would, would die would die death soon because they just hadn't played against Mid Dazzle, right? Um, they didn't realize how strong the, 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 the poison touches early. Um, so, yeah, I think it could just be a, a case of having not played too much against Mid Dazzle. So. I played a decent amount of support Dazzle, and I didn't even realize until, like, I think it was the last week, where you get more slow each time you hit the enemy. I had no idea. I actually didn't know that either. I didn't know that the slow went up every time that you refreshed it. Yeah, it goes up by, you know, 3.5% at max level each time you hit them, so. Yeah, that's very weird. Um, you can get out of hand very quickly there. Up top, we see the bench getting low. Son of a Rubik should be able to walk away there. That was a little Rubik to show off, but uh, still not too happy having to, to run this long way around. Axe wrapping on the Venge. Are we going to have a wild slow. goose chase here? No, the Axe not committing to the chase. Um, back to the comment I made earlier, um, Axe, not a fan of leaning into Dazzle or Jakiro, but I actually think the Venge um, makes this a more favorable lane for the Axe. Yeah, I agree. He's not too upset about this. You know, Obviously, it's not... I guess free, but at the same time, pretty good. Pretty good. As, as far as like, axe lanes go, you're pretty happy with this one. Yep, most most last hits on the map right now. Speaking of Radiant last hits, um, 23 last point. hits, 7 denies on this Dazzle, and only 9 last hits on this mm -hmm. Invoker. Um, four and a half minutes in. Uh, the Doctor ha having a rough start here. Um, as you said, maybe a little bit of inexperience of the Invoker into the Dazzle matchup, but... Um, yeah, it, it definitely reminds me of the melee matchup, which is just essentially what it only really happens to range shows when they disrespect the poison touch. 
where once you get you get harassed low by the poison switch, then Dazzle just gets all the last hits they want, right? You can't really do much on your low HP. Um, I mean, there is a way for the Invoker to kind of get back in this lane with some Sun Strikes. If you look up top, you see that the is pretty low, doesn't have any regen on her. There is yeah, some opportunity there for him to get back into the game if he's paying attention. Yeah, definitely would be nice for his team to maybe call out say, you know, hey, look at this sport top of the sport bomb. I mean, I mean, the primal right now, you know, sitting very low, um, slowed by the, the zombies as well. So, um, you could definitely see him easily, you know, regain this, this this lead that Dazzle has. I mean, it's you know, by no means over. It's five minutes into the game, but uh, yeah, it would, it would be nice to see him. Yeah, I'd love to see a lane swap here with the Jakiro and the Venge. I just feel like the Venge would lane so much better bot with get the double stuns. You can. Yeah, I mean, the Bobby the rotating ice. mid on the Dazzle. Ice Wall off the target. Lift back Ooh. into it, though. Big heal, and it looks like the Dazzle will go down. Go down. Very, very big effective game. rotation. We told you about the Dazzle game back in this game. That's what the play is exactly what they need. Jakiro uh, TP just a little bit too late there to help out. Didn't have Ice Path either, so a little uncertain how much he could have done. Radiant yeah, I mean, I, I assume he TP to come Saturn experience. Um, that will gone for 20, the entire wave was dying, so just wants to get that efficiency out for his team. Grab the end is you know, Jakiro and is, is walking towards that lane. Yeah, there might be an opportunity here. The Rubik is sitting fairly low. Yeah, I mean, the Axe is a little hard to kill with the Vanguard, but between the uh, the dual breath and the, the CK uh, heavy rifle, they might be able to take the down. That's the loss of magic damage there. coming out. Yeah, yeah magic taking it down. Honestly, big pick for Dire. TK's got to be pretty happy about getting the last hit on that. I mean, he has to be doing too badly last hit was himself. Ah, uh, just saying, Wisdom Runes to kill Radiant's here. I think it's going to get both of them. Oh, yep. Big XP for the sports on Radiant. Benja might be going down here, trying to fight the Rubik. Yeah, we'll see. The Rubik. I mean, the Rubik's getting scared, I guess. He... he didn't trust her overconfidence, so... Venge doesn't have enough mana, though, for... Sunstrike? Yeah! There it is. Beautiful. Beautifully played. Oh, and a kill on the Primal under tower bot as well. Throws the tombstone down right in front of the tower. <laughs> then get out of my lane. Yeah, can be Looks like we got a dive going on oh. here, bot. Yeah, Heading towards the tier two. I don't know <laughs> how much. Look down, Nathan, and what want to go that way? No, they back off. You, you, never, back oh here? you never know when it's going to be a, a TPN from from some of these other heroes. So, was Ben just being kind to the dials on refilling that bottle for him? Dire for Dyer's bottom top. Wow, that was unintentional. Forget I said that. Their bottom tower is in trouble, though. Oh, nice, Bobby coming mid, denying the regen rune. Yeah. Um, Rubik doing absolute work trying to help this Invoker out, get him back into the game a bit. Um, yeah, 28 so last hits on the Invoker now to Dazzle's 52, so not quite the same amount of starvation. That said, oh, they rotate Bob's up on Bobby. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunate for him, but I, mean, I think he did a good job. Denying that the region on the Dazzle against the Dazzle is really useful. I mean, he can make use of the, the region really well with the bad juju. Um, so, good just to get it away from him. What sort of items would you like to be seeing out of this mid lane? Because that seems to be where a lot of the action is happening. Got the I mean, completed kind of shadows on the Invoker. Uh, looks like Dazzle's going to be rushing the Ags. Yeah, I mean, the Invoker's going for the classic uh, Spirit Vessel build. Nothing too crazy there. Um, and then the Dazzle's also going for kind of the classic Ags build. Not, not, not heading towards the, the greedier Midas star. I'm a little surprised has a very good lane, so normally you would have thought maybe he'd uh, slow himself down a little bit, but I guess wanted to play it safe because I'm gonna get punished by the, the axe's aggression or something like that. Again, but for the Midas, uh, once the Dazzle does have the axe, though, um, it's a very strong power play for his team. Mm -hmm. A lot of damage. CK pops and old top to help farm the lane, but doesn't really seem to be doing much. Very timid and um, apprehensive to sh get too close to this axe. Who's level six with the Vanguard queuing up the blink neck, so Axe will be ready to fight. Um, maybe another four or five minutes here. Yeah, yeah the Drow does seem to be having a, a much nicer time between the two ones now. 
Thought on the drow. Looks like the primal's coming in. A little bit low on mana here. They don't really have anything for to kill the kill. Three retaining the... rotation then. Should be enough to dying to be a sacrifice. And with the drow getting the primal super, the primal goes down. Oh, they got a kill. And the bench goes down as well. Sunstrike on the hero. All three are going down. This is. This is huge. That was so hype. Yeah, no, it was actually crazy. This Rubik coming in, making plays, making moves. You doubted. They'll even have just got level six too. Dual breath, of course, stolen. Uh, that, was, that was good to see. Invoker prioritizing the vessel first. I think that's not a bad call against the Dazzle, who has all those heals. Um, Dazzle, a quarter of the way to the Ags, gets the shield rune mid. Happy to fill up that bottle for himself again. Radiance Middle Tower is hanging on by a Gives him a lot more threat against these really tanky heroes that generally would be chugging off the magic damage. I was surprised that uh, fight went as well as it did. Lane, the Invoker goes down, the Dazzle's diving, and it looks like he might be taking the mid tower as well with that catapult wave. Mid -tower I'd like to be Irish. seeing this. This Axe is having a great time top, but it seems like he's kind of forgotten the rest of his team and how many last hits he's getting. Yeah, I, I can only imagine the frustration of playing with an Axe who uh, is opting for farm over helping the team. <laughs> well, since he's getting this blink instead of uh, the blade mail queued up, maybe that's a sign that he's planning on being a little more active. Yeah, and if your Drow's farming happily and getting kills in the safe lane, I mean, the, I, I suppose he could help the Invoker some more, but... Um, at this point, I, I think we're just going to see Invoker stay away from the mid lane. The mid tower is down. Um, the matchup against the Dazzle is not fun for him to play into, so probably hanging around the outside. Dazzle going on the Undying here. Tombstone, Tombstone down. down. Oh, Dazzle that. pops fast. The Axe being taken down as well. Sunstrike on the CK, and the CK is getting real low. It's down, and they got the bench. Yep. This Undying is just running at the Jakiro. <laughs> Not a care in the world. That's gotta be scary. Sundown is gonna make it out. The Undying gives up. Perhaps a passing issue there. Oh, Rubik with a stolen with poison touch on the Primal Sunstrike. Nice. Doctor doing great with the Sunstrikes. The boys are coming out to play today. Wow. No, I wouldn't get too comfortable with the advantage. As we said, there are a lot of ways to address the Drow, who's contentedly been farming in the safe lane, but once we see some of these items come online on Dire, I'm um, curious to see if the tempo changes. So what kind of item timing are we looking at for Dire for them to kind of get back into this game and try and take control of what's been happening? Good question. Um, you know, the armlet on the CK is certainly going to make the CK more fight ready. I think the Ags on the Dazzle, um, if you see the Midas come to follow that, I, though, you know, that's when the Dazzle is really going to start popping off in its net worth and ability to um, get farm around the map, um, participate a bit more in the team fights. Venge actually queuing up the Ags as well. Interesting. A bit greedy for a, a support, but... If she does get it, it can work out. Especially she's uh, feeding. <laughs> Dazzle getting gone on bot. Trying to go on the Rubik. We call it a setup the Sun Strike. I mean, you'll love to see it. Yeah, that's probably not able to get to them fast enough. Ooh. The Poison Touch does eventually take down that Rubik, though. The worst thing in the world. Looks like the Venge was just not quite in position to be saving her cores that are trying to get, trying to get there. The Dazzle is so close to the eggs. It would be nice if uh, maybe just calm down for a second, farm that up, and then try again. I think die on the whole benefit from just sitting back and farming for now. 
they don't want to be taking fights that they can't win. And it also looks like the drow has the eggs queued up. Can we get an eggs check on how many people are going to be building it? First item. Drow? Get drow. Venge? Man, Radiant does not like Dyer's bottom and like we got it the... shows. Might just be those three for now. I mean, this is the drow game you love to play. You're farming your jungle, kills are coming to your lane for you, able to hit creeps without much fear. Axe blink reveal. So and right wow, that prepared is disappearing. Like raiding straps really working out for them right now. Yeah, uh, the, the guy just haven't currently got a way to really get to that back line, especially with the Dragon Lance on Drow. She's able to sit so far behind her beefy boys and smack towers, smack heroes. She's very safe for her. Dazzle just finished up that egg, so we might be seeing some mucho damage coming out. Ax did call the CK off to the side, but the CK sitting at full health. Um, the changes to Chaos Strike making it so maybe not as concerned about Paul. Oh, Going to Sunstrike. Classic combo. Okay, this is gonna get many heroes killed this game. Swap over to look at the net worth of these, see how it's going. Um, we got Drow topping almost 3,000 net worth higher, 2.5 thousand higher than the CK. We're having a great start to this game, but there is a smoke move going down bot. Drow is showing on lane, and her team is not behind her. Wanna still up, maybe? TPing? Yeah. Maybe they don't oh, have the range. Man. No, unfortunate. I don't know what happened there. I mean, the Dazzle was running straight there, and the rest of his team don't kind of now, went a different direction. Yeah, they, they, they went, went um, they went the through the river, um, up the staircase, the trying to wrap, trying to scout out. Um, I don't think they knew that the Drow was alone. Maybe trying to catch up some of the save for the Drow. Um, you're, you're right though, Rico. I think that maybe you want to lead with one of your guaranteed stuns onto the Drow and have the Don't Poison Touch follow that up. Bottom tower is getting obliterated. It's all a good idea, and now they've kind of taken control of the bottom side of the map. So I like I like what they're thinking, seeing that they have this Dazzle timing. Maybe they're a little bit stronger. Just a little unfortunate that I uh, thought the Drow had some friends behind her, and she didn't. Just keep you out. Dazzle, Poison Touch on the other. And the axe, CK ults, going in on the axe. Ooh. Axe and the undying drop early. Maybe just a little reminder to the Radiant that they maybe can't be pushing tier twos quite so well. Not without all five at the very least. Now we got the CK leading it, CZ and Boker. Oh, the illusion. Final piece ult. The ghost walk Sentry off and take the ghost walk. Well, looks like they got a little bit of uh, revenge there for that failed gank bot and came up three kills ahead. Sort of on a macro game level, what what do we want to be seeing? Like, what at this point are each team trying to do here? Scanning around I for think enemies. you're doing a four-man gank squad around the axe if you're radiant, while the drow is farming nearby but not under vision. Um, you know, blink call from the axe very powerful. I think dire. Similarly, you probably want to group up a lot at this point. Um, lots of damage, lots of really good team fight, lots of save from your Dazzle, from your Venge. Um, I'd love to see this transition to a bit of a brawl. Looks like it's going to get denied and that Dyer is going to be exiting this one. Um, Radiant spotted out by an Observer and a Sentry on the high ground. 
Wait, Korea can go through portal? <laughs> what? I had no idea. Yeah, Dazzle's Korea just used the twin gate. Went top. Wow. Very cool. You know, that's the beautiful thing about Dota. You play for thousands of hours and still learn something new. It's the first time ever in the history of Dota we've seen that. <laughs> it looks like we got a five bot. Sunstrike. Oh, dodge oh. by the chaos. Oh, the phantasm oh. there. Colin is undying. TK gets taken Tombstone down by doing the work though here. Oh, this is turning into a disaster. This drow is just slapping him. There's too many zombies on that Jakiro. I really needed that primal beast with me to help close the gap and maybe get on top of that drow. She just had the freest fight of her life. Okay, I'm gonna try and take this tournament to him. Yeah. Nope. Not enough then. <laughs> Decides it's not worth it. <laughs> Looks like the primal at least got that XP rune. Uh, from the enemy. Nope, actually did not. It wasn't quite up yet, so... Really was on the other side of the map and didn't get a whole lot accomplished there. Invoker did go back for the Midas. Um, you know, a bit of a catch-up item, a bit of a stay-ahead item. Um, Dazzle did not opt for it, instead going for the Manta. Mina, how do you feel about the Ags into Manta build on mid-Dazzle? Uh, I haven't seen it too much. Um... It's, uh, I've seen, oh, well, I've seen some players do it, I haven't seen, I haven't, like, they win too much in my games. Um, they have built Manta, but normally not early. I think it's a very good, like, late game, uh, dispel. I'm a big fan of heading towards uh, an Arcane Blink. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I don't know if I want to know. Good and terrible, bad, good, terrible, amazing, you know, whatever. Um, I have seen it on, on Cordazes before. I think they, they really just want the extra damage from... Healing illusion. And you can push out wave safer. I mean, it also is a great way to dispel the drow silence there, as well as a lot of invoker spells. So it's like both teams are just going for their tormentors. And we see that the CK has a blink dagger now, so this drow is going to have a bit more trouble in these fights. Dust pop by the Undying. Mina messaging me in Steam. His throat <laughs> is dead. R.I.P. Yeah. Mina's throat. Oh no. Maybe a little bit too much casting yesterday. Or wait a minute. Earlier this week. Ah, uh, that and uh, I believe he's ill right now. Ooh, no, great call on the bench and the dazzle. Sunstrike hits too. You can't have both your saves stand on top of each other like that. Amazingly, this axe hasn't got a single dunk off this game so far. Yeah, he might be ahead, but if you're not getting those stacks, it feels bad. Windgraph only slightly favoring the boys at this point. Decent experience and gold lead out. And as I say that, the graph is adjusting um, about 75% to the boys. <laughs> Um, twenty five percent for RNS, but I don't feel that they're out of it yet. I feel you get another item or two on this Chaos Knight, um, beef up a bit more, and you can potentially chop down the entire. You know, you can finally get that Drow pick that you've been looking for. Drow, who I think hasn't died yet. Lots of gold available for a kill on this Drow. Um, be curious to see if Dyer is able to rotate and make it happen. Oh. Big Macropire Ice Pack on his axe. He's so key for their initiation. That's a shower grave on himself, on Dying going forward. He's the job comes in. They are just getting dismantled. Diving past the tier threes. Uh, Fire back in the bench. Primal not coming into fights, not joining the rest of his team. Wants to farm up that next big item, but it's just costing them. Uh. Rubik did something really cute there. Reality rifted the Dazzle on the high ground to close the gap and be able to go in for the kill. That's a die back on the bench. Dead for a minute. Dota boys walking high ground. No glyph available, so 
tower at least before. Probably the racks as well. They do have decent damage between them. Yep, Macro Pyre still a 23 second cooldown. Not able to spam out the wave here. But, I mean, one benefit is, since the Primal Beast died, he is in base and will have to fight with his team if they fight here. <laughs> Thinks about going on the Undying, changes his mind. Primal Beast here really having a hard time. Even though he's been off farming, he's still bottom three net worth. Yeah, I also want to make comment on um, this CK opted for the Blink Dagger, which I, I feel you're really more dependent on your Primal Beast to close that gap and sort of initiate these fights. You you have the Reality Rift and it feels a bit redundant um, and a bit throwing off his timing investing, you know, the 2300 gold into the Blink Dagger early on where you could already have the Yasha of... Um, Manta um, could be building up many other things. Dyer going for Roche here while Radiant are approaching their high ground. Curious to see how this plays out. Um, Radiant maybe not seizing the opportunity where they could just be plinking away at the Dyer's high ground. Undying walks up, walks away. Rubik's hitting the tower. Drow goes to join them. Roche under half HP. <laughs> could be a dying walking up, slapping it one time and leaving. They get a couple tower shots just for fun. Yeah, you wouldn't be expecting this, would you? Oh, oh they scan the Roche. They know, but Sun Strike. No such luck. They got that for free. They're going to be losing one tower now that they realize they're not there. But... Macro Pyre out. Poison touch going on. Here comes the Primal Beast. It's the first 5v5 fight we'll see. And you're seeing how much damage this is out from these spells. Well, Rubik in. The middle of everyone. <laughs> Rubik did get swapped high ground there. <laughs> that was a great play from Dyer. I mean, they got the Aegis, denied it from the other team at the very least, even if they aren't trying to fight. You saw how strong their 5v5 fight was, 5v5 fight on the high ground there, and come out ahead. Yeah, about 3,000 experience and 1,700 gold. Um, swing into the dire from that fight so they're hurting but they're not totally out of this yet and they're showing that to radiant dota boy's got to respect the enemy team going high ground you know into into the macro pyre into the ice path into the swap probably wishing they had the uh aegis at about this time yeah and hopefully this might be a little wake up call for the primal that uh he should be with his team it's like they're smoked up here Draw his BKB. Yeah, they're moving aggressive, drawing some lines on the map. They saw the act showing in lane. Um, and Radiant's pretty split up right now. There is a double damage rune bot, but they're opting to just go straight, trying to find a kill here. Um, interesting build from Look Down Nathan on the Undying. Oh, we're going to go on the axe here. The we axe see him. Too. Nope, no blink. He's popped Dumb fast. Kill. Um, wanted to comment on the Undying, queuing up the Heart. Already has the Reaver. Blade Mill, Heart, P4, Undying. Um, not very conventional, but we'll see how that plays out. Maybe he sort of understands his role in this game. He's got to be that big, beefy boy in front of the Drow, trying to soak up a lot of those spells. Obviously not going to work if he just gets ignored, but if Dyer tries to fight him... Um... There could, there could be a lot of benefit in this. Yeah, you know, and it affords your axe the opportunity to be counter-initiate rather than initiate. You can just somewhat confidently run at them with a heart up on the Undying, um, you know, eat up a bunch of damage, and maybe by the time the enemy's gotten a little comfortable, um, they'll be grouping up for the perfect man, call. I mean, <laughs> axe has also gotten the heart queued up. But if I was... We got two BKBs completed here on uh, Radiant, both on the Axe and on the Drow. Shakiro getting pulled oh, off. Oh, going on one. Sorry, Joe, what was that? Uh, Jakiro died before I can even explain what was going on. Uh, possibly looking at the Watcher, get the Wisdom Rune late. 
Oh, um, they're just taking out their racks. Bot lane. Almost gone. Drow popping the manta early right, doesn't here. have the manta for escape, and dying sitting in the front throws the tombstone down. Blade mail up, running at them. Drow contentedly sitting back, throwing those frost arrows out, doing considerable oh, damage. Rubik and Primal Beast fighting off to the side, and Boger blinks in. Takes out the CK. Drow, BKB is still up. It's such a surprising move from their break again. They just came in there and uh... Oh wow, what a call. Yeah, I think Pretty that's the beginning of the end. Yep. Uh, I've just been too spread out across the map. It seems yeah, so close to getting back into this game. That's a very heads up play, just going in, recognizing that they were strong with their triple BKB timing in. Just closing it out. Um, strong performance from the Dota boys. They were hungry for it. Um, I still stand by. I think Dyer had a very strong draft there, but Dota boys just executing some beautiful Dota. Um, love to see it. Yeah, Rico, I, I think you pointed out, you know, we, we probably wanted to see the Primal Beast getting involved in some more of these fights, um, ending the game with only three kill participations um, relative to, you know, say your mid-Dazzle with 13, your Venge with 10. Um, next game, maybe pick a different P3 who's kind of forced to be more active. Uh, what do you think? I don't remember exactly what the... Bands or if they had something like a Dawnbreaker or someone you can move around the map a little bit more, then maybe that kind of play style would work. But if your team's getting run at that hard and they're really depending on you to gap close, then you, you got to be with them, even if you're feeling like you're behind on farm. I mean, you saw the CK was feeling the pressure, queued up that blink dagger to kind of take the role of the primal beast. But so at the very end, they're not quite enough to, to close it out, unfortunately. But hopefully they'll be able to take some of the lessons that they learned in this match and shake it off and come back for a good game too. Uh, Slug, could I ask you to step in and help set up the lobby for the next one? Sure thing. It's like casting booth is even larger now. We got a couple other people in here. <laughs> well, I appreciate those who have joined um, being somewhat quiet here. <laughs> as much as I would love to pop off uh, I'm only able to speak in very monotone tones yeah rest that voice Mina there, there are plenty of us to speak about the match here I don't know man we, we need more people in the, uh, the story <laughs> pack yeah so was, you guys are doing, you guys doing great so it was fun I was vibing you guys had me invested <laughs> <laughs> Are you able to watch Coop? The Copium dude is the best in the biz. Well, you gotta make sure that uh, that there's still a, still a chance on each side. Talk about how people can get back into the game. Rico's a professional coper. <laughs> I think that fucking Chaos Knight just got tilted when he picked Drow. It's like, oh yeah, this hero counters. I forgot because Chaos Knight is so meta. Actually gets great countered by Drow. So you believed in the draw pick there? I think I, I he popped off when he played well, but it was like I think they set it up really nicely. Yeah, I yeah, still I think. Pretty... Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I still think you know that there were some execution issues coming out of you know the primal never um, really forcing the issue on top of the draw and. I think the Blink Dagger on the Chaos Knight, it's a little too redundant when you've got the Reality Rift, in my opinion. Like, I understand the the need and the want to close the gap on the Drow, but I think, you know, 2,200 gold invested in that item um, versus anything else to, you know, beef up your, your character and therein your illusions, um, worth more in the early game. I think sometimes, unfortunately, though, you have to build items for the game that you have rather than the game that you want or the game that you should be playing. It'd be kind of tough both ways. I mean, obviously, getting the Blink Dagger really delays some of those other crucial item timings, but they just did not have a way of getting on top of that Drow. You saw in some of those fights, she just stood there, didn't even have to kite, just dismantling everybody.
sort of makes you wonder what could have happened in some of in that early gank down bot where the dazzle came in and did the poison touch on top of the drow and she just teepeed out in front of four other smoked heroes. Could have been. I didn't think you have to figure out, you know, what made the primal beast not able to jump on the drow and execute. Because it seems like that was kind of the crux of the game. With CK feeling like he had to do it, it's like it's just over. But I think Joe's right. You have to build stab items in CK. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, a couple of times the Primal Beast just wasn't wasn't with his team. Uh, maybe miscommunication there, or they weren't just quite set up, but hopefully they'll be able to figure that out uh, for this next game. I'm going to pop down and well, see how dinner's like going. Hero. Like, if he doesn't feel like he's ahead, I think it's very easy to feed on that hero. And so mm -hmm. I think he's trying to not do that, but uh, so you have to look at, I think, you know, how they could have set him up to have a better game. I mean, I think they honestly just weren't ready for the drow. Like that kind of, you know, no one's playing it. Yeah, I wasn't ready for it either. I thought it was um, a losing pick, but they actually showed up with it. It was, uh, it was nice to see. I don't think we can discount those early rotations from the Rubik either. Um, if you had to pick an MVP for this game, who, who would be your vote? I like the ability of the Invoker to keep their cool after losing the mid to the Dazzle. Um, I think there's a lot to be said about that, that we saw some really nice sun strikes, always ready when the Axe was, you know, blinking and doing the call on, on the ready. I don't know. I, I mean, there, there were a lot of really fantastic plays out of Dota Boys that game. The Axe, you know, constantly looking for the blink calls, you know, catching out, um, as we saw near their top tier two, the Dazzle and the Venge, um, forcing out any saves from happening. Um, I don't know. I'm having a hard time picking. Did you have someone in mind, Rico? Yeah, it was kind of split. I mean... I definitely agree with everything you said about the Invoker. Um, I almost wanted to go with the, the Jakiro there for really keeping registered Night Stalkers in the game uh, with his Ice Paths and Macro Fire Pyres. Macro Fires? Pyres? Pyres. Yeah, Pyres for the D, D push there. Um, even though they did lose, it, it felt like a pretty crucial element just to make sure that they had a chance and kind of stayed in for as long as they did. And I just appreciate, you know, when a support's ready and in position and able to, to cast the spells when they need to. It's felt like yeah, there I wasn't... Think, yeah, I think you're right that the game was pretty fast until Rubik kind of Bring broke it open. And done. also the, the Sunstrike and the Axe. I mean, it was a pretty simple game plan. Mm -hmm. Simple but effective. I think whoever picked Drow, though. I mean, I think, like, people often... This happens a lot where, like, there's a new meta hero like CK. Ten and seconds then, left. you know... Well, CK Drow has been a matchup right? for like as long as Dota's man. been around, right? But uh, he's the meta hero, and Drow's not, and you just forget. They're like, oh yeah, that's a thing that you have to think about. And if Ten you seconds. can't like have another hero that's able to get on top of the Drow, she's just going to handle business. And that's like Five seconds. It. So why does the Drow do so well against the CK? Well, she can clear his illusions, right? Obviously. Because she just stands mm -hmm. there. And then she can kite him. I mean, the moment she gets some frost heroes on him, it's 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 very similar to Ursa, and at least CK has Reality Rift, so it's not like unwinnable. But I think it's the way that you set up the team, and they set their team up so that they could protect her out. Radiant gets the ban. And they kind of just, you know, it was execution too, but like, because they shut down Primal, there was no one to open the game up for CK, and he was never get, able to get like Ten the seconds. items they just needed long to enough to draw. regret every and choice you've made back if you hurry. Time. Five seconds. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see what kind of game plan uh, both teams come in to next. We got the first sort of round of bans coming out, uh, very similar to last game. It looks like registered Night Stalkers are banning and dying this time. Sort of identified that as an issue that they had. Yeah, undying doing work with the tombstone placement that game. Um, early kills in the bot lane. 
uh, very strong support in general. Um, I also want to comment on the Drow matchup. You know, Drow also against the Dazzle. As long as you can get that gust on the Dazzle, I mean, seconds. Dazzle really struggles into that silence. Um, Dazzle did eventually get the Manta to remove the silence, but I think it might have been too little too late. Up, banning time. Yeah, I mean, that hero can pump out so much damage just with the with her ult, so you're in a bad way if you Ten seconds. If she's just allowed to stand there and hit you. Oh, and also banned out the Rubik, Five so. Seconds. Yeah, putting some respect on Dota Boy's Radiant picks from last game. Felt like the supports were the, the main issue that they had. Ten seconds. So like Dota boys are thinking about their Five first seconds. pick. Maybe they're just using up that time to kind of talk about the rest of their draft. The, the Invoker Let's again. I guess they're feeling good with how it went. Spirit Breaker. Spirit now, this Breaker. is another one of those those meta picks. You know, and, and I like Spirit Breaker. Um, at all levels, Spirit Breaker goes in. Um, doesn't take his foot off the gas. I I think maybe the the Primal pulling their punches a bit last game, and I'm hoping the Spirit Breaker just charges off cooldown and doesn't look back. Radiance up, banning time. I think the big question I have here is what position is the Spirit Breaker going to be played? I mean, obviously we're not quite at TI level, but we've seen him in position four, two, three. So there's a lot of opportunities and options that registered Night Stalkers have at Ten the seconds. moment. Is there a particular spot that you like seeing this hero or position played? We're starting in five seconds, with or without you. They haven't picked it up before. Registered Night Stalkers, so really gonna Dyer yeah depend on what their players are comfortable with, I suppose. It can be three or four, and even two. I remember when I first started playing Dota, uh, I was playing with friends that were much more experienced than me, and they would just tell me to pick Spirit Breaker and just tell me who to charge at. And so it took a lot of the thinking out Five of seconds. it. Dyer's turn to pick. Um, I think uh, that's nice the reason you pick him. In. Are you talking about when I gave you Spirit Breaker last week during our match? Oh, no, that was great. <laughs> you didn't tell me anything. <laughs> Spirit Breaker was not the problem. <laughs> He is actually a great hero to learn on because you you have a global mechanic, so you you know a lot of new players have a hard time maneuvering the map. So just be you able know, to charge whatever you want. And there's so much value being given also with uh, just the vision that he provides. Uh, RNS going back for the venge. I like that. Um, we had some nice swaps last game. Um, pulling the Rubik high ground uh, when they're. Tier 3 was getting sieged, um, shutting down the Rubik from getting so many spells off in the team fight was great. Um, would like to see a little more defensive positioning this game, um, have some safer swaps, but I, I think the Venge is a solid pick here. Uh, it can also help the Spirit Breaker, so if that is a Spirit Breaker 3, laning with the Venge 4 to help you um, you know, secure the lane just in case you are going into two ranged heroes. It should be nice and should be able to help them. Um, Secure the lane aggro to allow the Spirit Breaker to get some last hits if it is a Spirit Breaker 3. A little bit easier to get these stuns off. I mean, with Primal Beast, you got to kind of steer the onslaught with the SP. Click that charge button. You're not going to miss. Exactly. Gives them a very easy way of closing the gap on heroes like Drow. Radiant knows just who to pick here. I bet. Lion. Lion. You know, I bet they're going to give the Spirit Breaker to the uh, three-position Primal Beast player because they're like, now you have to be with us. <laughs> you have a global charge. I mean, this does kind of solve that problem that I was talking about earlier. Like, Ten if he wants to play in other parts of the map, three. that's Every fine. But if you you're on a hero like Spirit Breaker or Dawn Breaker, uh, then you can join the team, have some influence, and be able to pick. contribute when those fights do break out. All right, turn. So much control already from the Dota boys. Slammed the Spectre immediately after. No hesitation. Yep. 
a um, little bit of the global combo we had been talking about. You can have, um, you know, your Venge go scout out the hero and a charge in and a shadow step in and delete, um, you know, possibly an invoker or a lion before a fight even hurt. starts. Five seconds, four. Three. You think they're going to full send and go for a Zeus here? Hmm. No. Some more dances. <laughs> it's not impossible. They should definitely pick Quad on the, uh, pick here, I'll bet. Disruptor. <laughs> on the, uh, yeah, Night Stalkers. Pop does feel pretty good. Uh, that was a strat that me and Joe ran. I had the Spectre Quap. I think we had Dawnbreaker instead of Spirit Breaker. Yeah, uh, Coop. Um, similar idea. You know, similar to having a Dawn and a Spec Ulton on you, how do you think they're going to feel about a Spirit Breaker charge Spec Ulton on them? I think they're going to ban it the next game until we lose. <laughs> <laughs> But I do like the Disruptor pick. It gives them a lot of team fight, which they've kind of been lacking, especially after the Spectre change to Haunt. Um, up, banning time. Depending Sky on where these Disruptor Mage. ults at. Oh, a uh, Skyrath Mage pick. Bro, I think the <laughs> Dota boys are fucked. <laughs> That's my prediction. <laughs> I don't like how this looks at all. That's well, a crazy pick. Why would they do that? I do you want to explain a little bit why you think that's a crazy pick? This dies and it doesn't kill anything. We're starting in five seconds, with or without. There is a six. Like, you kill disruptor, right? But if it doesn't, if it, it gets everything gets swapped. He dies so easily to specter or spear breaker. It fits in with the already high magic damage team. If that's what they're going for, then uh, I right. respect Dyer. it. But I'm really not sure where their heroes are laying. It fits Dyer. in both of them. You've got three classic support heroes, otherwise. I guess the Spirit Break or the Earthshaker can be three. Or one well, if they're cracked on it, but not everyone is Joe <laughs> Hungers. They could be doing yeah, the how that game go. <laughs> and then you lose. We're 10 seconds they might be doing that strategy. You tell an I don't know. I mean, like, right now, Dota Boys look so squishy. And those, those are all things that Spectre and Spirit Breaker love. They get one charge reality riff. Even if the Skyrath Mage gets his spells off, he's just gonna die to dispersion. Wait, do they dare like pick CK again here? Because I don't even know. I feel like that's the only hero that could salvage this. Ten seconds. Um, I want to comment too. The charge also gives vision for both swap seconds, and glimpse. So the ability for the Dota right. boys to run away, um, and disengage a fight is gonna be really limited. I'm really liking registered Night Stalkers picks right now. Um, they literally just picked like the most picked heroes in the patch. Yeah, it seems like a good idea behind it. What do you think uh, Dota Boys would have to grab here to five seconds do that two zero sweep? Dyer's turn to pick. PA. Five Stealer or CK. Monkey King. Okay, this is wild. <sighs> Monkey King gets hunted down pretty easily by Spirit Breaker and Disruptor, and he gets scattered out by Venge as well. Yeah, I think this is a classic game two hubris draft, but you know, they, if they're better, they might be able to pull it off. Here. Welcome to Dota. Admiral yeah, Dota. Dota. Yeah, they're fucked, dude. And, that <laughs> really anchors the draft there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in the event the Monkey King tries to run away from a fight. He could be charged and then swapped and then glimpse back and then X to keep him from getting away. Um, just a ton of control out of Register Night Stalker's draft. I mean, there's so many ways they have like they can glimpse him out of his monkey ult. They can swap him out of monkey ult. I don't know. I think Register Night Stalker is it's, it's their game to lose right now. Yeah. So, do we want to lock in our picks on favorite drafts here? Rico, we'll start with you. Yep. Registered Night Stalkers all the way. Uh, <laughs> but hard, hard time seeing how they. I mean, anything could happen in Mage League, but this <laughs> this looks pretty easy for them. Coop, how are you feeling? I mean, yeah. Draft wise, it's just like after the last game, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to. It's, I mean, it's global Spectre's draft, right? It's brain dead to execute. So I feel like uh, 
Hopefully they can. But yeah, the well, your bitterness is apparent, um, Slug. <laughs> I, I'm really not sure. I I think Delta Boys, they do have so much burst on their team. If they pick off the right heroes before a fight starts, then uh, they, they could definitely clean up. So yeah, go for go for Delta Boys here. Yeah, I mean, if, if uh, Radiant's smart, though, like, I don't know. All right, get ready. I don't know who, who they pick off, really, because it's like, it, it would have to be Venge. Because <laughs> otherwise, you know, whoever they go on, if the Dire can counter gank, they're just going to be on there globally, like, with at least three heroes. I mean, one thing I do want to point out is the Earthshaker did have almost 2,000 games on that hero. Or maybe that was wins and losses total. Not hundred percent sure. Um, I'm gonna take a wild guess, but I guess we'll see. We'll see how he plays. Looks so like we're gonna have off. a fight here. Well, team's caught in an awkward spot here. Skyra splitting off from the rest of his team over to the right. Not sure that's where you want to be, friend. Blood grenade thrown on him. Nothing else to follow up. Both teams acting very timid. Spirit Breaker opting to go for level one greater bash. Um, even though he has a blood grenade, isn't able to charge and sort of block down that uh, zero armor hero. Well, without the bash, I mean, even if you get blood grenade, you can do it. You have to body block. It'd be too risky. Charge, you get that uh, stun on the target. Yeah. But, uh... Thank God we're starting the main event. The big dance. The I think it's hard, game. I think, because of the lane. The field of so dreams. Nice the world mm -hmm. of war. Right. We're seeing the monkey and the lion bot. With the disruptor paired up with the specter top. Yeah, Spirit Break Revenge. Let's see how that lane goes. I mean. Is this a boss three bench? Hmm. Looks like she's farming. Yeah. It's right. This is not what I was expecting. Yeah, Rex Cow was their offlaner from last time. Which, with Cow in the name, you'd think they'd be grabbing the Spirit Breaker. I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> This is definitely a surprise to me. How do uh, how do we all feel about this having the bench three here? Um, I guess it makes sense if it's the monkey. Bench, so I, I'm I don't feel good about it. I'm an avid believer. I mean, I think it's actually three. fine. Uh, as long as Mina will tell you. Players, he will never give it to me. It won't be it won't be that bad. And if Venge can get a fast axe, that kind of like deals with a big. You know, like the issue of the burst, because you can just like sit Venge way out in front and always follow up and like basically play the map that way. So I think it's, it makes kind of, it makes sense for the strategy actually. I also feel like the Spirit Breaker would have a really hard time getting last hits here against the Monkey King Lion, um, classic melee hero counter. How do we feel about these? Uh... Starting item builds here. Um, which starting hey. item? The Midas, the Battle Fury, the Radiance. Well, I was thinking more of what they uh, came out with uh, for leaning. That's See, like for instance, the Disruptor and the Spec both got the wands for the Skyrath Mage. See the vengeful spirit with a full magic wand built. Yeah, it's nice against the lion. I mean, if this lion puts an early level in mana drain with each mana drain, you're guaranteed to earn some of your mana back by virtue of the charges. You notice the invoker went cross wipes this game instead of exhort. He was exhort last game. Oh, interesting. 
Yeah. He got first blood on the Spirit Breaker there. He uh, tried to go on the Lion. The Lion just stunned him. Monkey King walked over and slapped him down. Dyer's courier has lost its brave battle with a bunch of swords and fireballs. Taken too soon. Gearbreaker opted to TP to lane rather than charging out. Um, over to mid lane, uh, Kunkka a bit of a lead on the Invoker. Uh, Kunkka is favorable in this matchup, so we'll see if the Doctor um, is able to pull off similar to last game, able to make a bit of a comeback in the mid game after probably gonna lose out on um you know the cs advantage in the mid lane that's fine to be expected he has uh, fewer opportunities for the sun strikes with no axe in this game so we'll see if uh yeah if he can join the rest <laughs> of the team. and even fewer opportunities with no levels and exhort <laughs> We see the lion looking a little bit caught out, getting stunned by the Veng. Spirit Breaker gets a bash, 17%. It's going to be 100% in this case. Ooh, Spirit Breaker, far more disciplined than I. <laughs> Not going for those two couriers he saw run by. Oh, it looks like the Venge is going down with Monkey King's <laughs> range. Uh, attack range is 300, and the Venge attack range is only 400. So, feels pretty bad. Doesn't have quite that advantage you would normally expect from a ranged hero. Fearbreaker getting the Jingu stacked up on him. The Monkey King went for the early boots, which uh, neither of the offlaners here have. Able to sort of walk up, slap him around. Absolutely. Boots on the line as well, identifying that maybe uh, sort of move speed, being able to walk in and out is going to be important for this lane stage. See that kind of reflecting the last hits too, Spectre, uh, 15 and 0 with the Monkey King, 26 and 5. Yeah, I'd like to see the Radiant shutting down the spec a bit more. I think that's one of the values of um, Skywrath as a support, is just you can pump out an insane amount of magic harass during the laning phase, and the spec being so close in CS to this Earthshaker, who also opted for the early um, levels and enchant totem. Um, I'd like to hope that the Earthshaker would have a more commanding lead of the lane over the spec right now, but not quite the case. Yeah, I feel like you should be able to just completely outlast it. The spec here with Enchant Totem. You have the Soul Ring for Sustain. Um, and the Disruptor is going two points in Glimpse, and not a lot of harass coming out here from Thunderstrike. A little perplexing here. Yeah. Earthshaker also opting for Soul Ring. Um... Phase boots. I'm not a fan of skipping out on the mana boots on your offlane Earthshaker when you're paired with such a mana dependent support like a Skywrath Mage. Um, I think that would be providing a lot of value to both him and his laner to get the mana boots over the phase boots. Um, I'm not sure quite who you're phasing to close the gap on. Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, Dire is even really coming in with that much physical damage either. I mean, primarily, it's going to be magic oh here, with, or pure. You challenge on top. Walk top. All around. Got the X on the Earthshaker. Boat. Boom. Spirit Breaker charge. Easy peasy. That TV Back from the, the Invoker. Rock. That's going to be enough to finish him off. Yeah, and Volker yeah. are able to come in and disrupt it a little bit, but not enough to change the outcome of that fight. I think we're already seeing uh, the power of the Dire Draft, just how easy it is for them to execute, get these kills, get these pickoffs. If they get a little bit ahead, it's uh, Radiant's not going to be able to run away from them. Yeah, I think I've seen enough. <laughs> Coop's calling it. I'll be, I'll be back for game three if they pull us out. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> there he goes. Um, Venge also, you know, you made that comment about the boots. Building boots as the last part. The boots as the last component to the power treads. Monkey going in on the Venge. The magic missile, is it enough to slow her down? Monkey much faster, running her down. Yes, Spear Breaker entirely. shows up. Meanwhile, I missed a kill on the spec. Invoker rotating top. Oh, so maybe just the three of them were able to this, crank that down while... They actually got a kill on the spec and the disruptor, so... Yeah, dive and tower. Got nothing to fear right now. Yeah, maybe Cooper uh, disappeared a little bit too early. It's going to be three range creeps in a full wave that spec is going to be missing out on. Going for... Blade mail before boots. I don't love it. Um, I think, you know, having some move speed to control your positioning, especially against an enchant totem earth shaker um, that you're laning against is so critical. Bounty. Is mine. Spirit Breaker going for the face boots as well. And Kunkka. Wow, this is phase boot gaming. Monkey King already got treads. Wand completed, moving towards that battle fury. I look pretty happy with the state of the game. Yeah, battle fury to try to match the scaling of the spec. I don't hate it. I mean, if you're having an amazing start, maybe you would consider the Echo Saber to try to close out the game early. Um, Battle Fury is certainly not a bad choice, though. I'm setting a comfortable 2,000 above the Spectre and that worth already. Going on this spec again, Invoker comes top once more. Um, getting the Tier 1 bot out of the Dire, but I don't know. Uh, it, it's... You've got a spec without boots. It's gonna be hard for the spec to find the space to farm in to be relevant um, in this game. I mean, we certainly talked about some of the advantages here, but if you've got a spec who's uncomfortable pressing R to join the fights for, you know, likely another five minutes or so, that's that's not a good position to be in. We're gonna pick on the line here mid, X mark, charge, torrent, just gonna set them down. Not getting away from that. And the, of course, the disruptor waddling up for that glimpse if needed. Yeah, no, yeah, even using the boat on the Kanka. No, and the rest of the team is coming top. Yeah. Yeah. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. Okay, fine. You can look. It's kind of funny. And one benefit of the blade mail first. Um, is that it does make farming these camps a little bit easier. Spec notorious for being a bad farmer. Yeah, but I mean, we're talking, you know, nowhere near the, the improvements tower, that something like a market. Battle Fury on a Monkey is King down. is going to give you. Lockdown Nathan walking up under vision. Disruptor there, ready to catch him. Got him in the cage. Grand San Cisco with uh, the Fissure. Dyrus just melts. Echo Slam doesn't do that much, unfortunately. Spec comes in. to come in to join the fight. <laughs> we got Glimpse, the who's we got going the where? I'm getting lost. And he's taken down, and the spec gets the last hit. That was very needed. But during all this time, the Monkey King's up farming those jungle camps. Yeah. Hasn't died yet this game. No, it's only 12 minutes in, but still. And nearly Radiant three times the CS brain. as the They're spec. Um, bulging eyes. I'm sorry, the Monkey King level 9, the spec just barely level 6. Um, pretty big experience difference really between the two teams now. Though the wind graph does slightly favor RNS at this point in time. Um, and the recent fight bringing the gold nearly gold even. I think this Kanka is just really anchoring them. Um, we saw their mid player earlier with the Dazzle, uh, sort of running in, maybe didn't feel like he had his team behind him. And playing this Kanka, 
got a ton of strength gain, much tankier with this blade mail here. Uh, maybe a little more comfortable being that initiator. Absolutely. Plus three different ways to stop a TP, so not going to happen again. Venge going for Ags into Midas. I'm not sure I love it, but I've also seen a lot of Midas second item coming out of CI, so could just be the meta. Seeing the trickle down effect already occurring. Uh, Invoker got the Midas queued up. Shaker about 500 gold off of that blink da dagger able to do a lot with the blink dagger as long as we have good Initiations here getting a little caught out though Stacking up some stuns on the dire though and a tornado coming through maybe enough to save the spec jumps out front But I don't know if the spec wants to be there gets the spirit vessel on her and the cold snap a little high five on the way out Fissure to slow down the kunkka prevent the X Spearbreaker caught out a bit here. Both teams not quite sure if they want to commit. I seem a little unsure how to get this these fights started before these blink daggers come out. <coughs> oh, a tornado on two into the double mystic flare. Monkey King going down into the disruptor ult, but it's not going to be enough. Finger out on the Kunkka. X marks on the coming in. He's staying alive. Taken down by the Echo Slam by the Earth Shaker. Spirit Breaker out of mana, out of cooldowns, trying to run away. The spec right next to him still moving very slow without those boots. She's got boots. They're in her backpack. The Spirit Breaker managed to just get away. Don't even have to use Bulldoze. Spirit Breaker going. Or the Spectre, sorry, going back on the line. I don't know if this is the play. The Monkey King's right there. Nice dodge, glimpse back. The Blade the Mail, away. use it, yes. Ooh. Uh oh, real close. Earth Shaker. Almost going down, almost hit by the charge. Lion, one more hit. Oh, are they going to do it? Oh. Oh. <laughs> what an They're all totem. so low. Kunkka just throwing out spells, desperately trying to hit one of these heroes here. Yeah, Fissure not that quite the same setup magic. as your call. Ooh, misses the Tidebringer on the Earthshaker, though. Got the phase boots coming in. One hit, stunned again. Oh, here's the glimpse, yeah. Not getting out of this one, though. Unless... <laughs> <laughs> this is fight to go on for about two minutes here. Uh, unreal, absolutely unreal fight. In trouble from the way it's being destroyed as I speak. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. A while spec. Good luck. It's kind of funny. Boots. Got the Yasha queued up. Uh, bottom of the hero level chart. So, really unfortunate position to be in. Yeah, you always want your spec to have a good start, but. Not ever too surprising when she doesn't. Sunstrike on the Spear Breaker, taken out with a arcane bullet and a concussive shot from the Skyrath Mage. You got the Battle Fury finished up on the Monkey King. X Tumble going in on the Evoker. Evoker Ghost Walks immediately. Do they have the reel? They do have the dust. Blink Echo it doesn't do much. Um, Spec and the Kunkka, both as we mentioned, with the Blade Mail, very tanky. Meanwhile, the Monkey King kills the bench somewhere. Oh, this Disruptor is breaking ankles. Oh, taken out by the last hit from the Invoker. Hate to see it, but does give his team enough time to kill the Skyrath Mage there. Yes. I am really liking this adjustment though from Registered Night Stock. It seems like they recognized they were having some issues starting fights and uh, drafted almost here that every single one of their heroes can. Gonna pop away for a second and check out on how dinner's going. Be right back. Absolutely. Slug, what do you make of the match so far? 
That monkey's farming up a storm now. Not having to fight with his team at the moment. God is Battle Fury. We're really just accelerating away from RNS. It's, uh, it's not brilliant for all of them. Spectre, of course. Blade Mill herself, but at this point she's so far behind to catch up, and I don't know that she's, she's the best hero at doing that with the items Dying. she's currently got. Radiance throwing all they've got at Dyer's bottom tower. Link up on the lion. Um, another like great counter initiation out of the boys with that Probably utility man, available. Like Blink on Earthshaker so. and lion. Yeah. Like Much better initiation for, uh, for the Radiant. I'm not sure anyone on our is to get that sort of... Ooh. Am I coming into this fight? Finger, the Jingu stacks building up, and that's a very dead spec. Yeah, so much burst damage coming out from Radiant. Hard for Spectre to survive, even with the Blade Mail. Of course, gives armor, but that's just not enough versus the magic damage from Dirt. Like all the Revenge about 700 gold away from this ag. So I'm hopefully able to participate a bit more in kills moving forward. Uh, fully involved in two of the nine kills on the Dyer um, thus far this game. Dyer is scanning for enemies. Probably hoping to catch a glimpse of a noob. Monkey King keeping out. Sees that his Skyrath is chasing the Spirit Breaker. Venge about to get caught out. Has a full taunt to her to slow her down. Monkey King walking in. Yep. That's all she wrote. Left to die by the Spirit Breaker. Bit of a uh, combination of errors between the two of them. Meanwhile, um, a pick off on the Disruptor, the other side of the map. Uh, Radiant able to pressure this tier two. I said that. Their bottom uh, is Kunkka a scribbling very aggressively on the dire triangle. Starting to call out some shots here. Marking where Radiant are. Um, you know, and I think that's a good call. You can see that Radiant has some vision in the dire triangle. Dire has some strong vision in their jungle. Um, probably want to make some plays happen around there. See those three observers almost in a line across the dire top side of the map and Kunkka nearly with the ags as well another massive team fight item yeah it will be good to see nice stalkers pick up some of these big team fight items that they can use to defend their towers and perhaps catch radiance off guard the dire just Sitting here at the Tormentor. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the w delay was. Maybe they thought the Kunkka was joining them sooner. Unfortunately, not a great shard pickup. Um, ah, regeneration. Disruptor shard, one of the weaker ones in the game that I would argue. Both teams doing Tormentor. Yeah, shot on the lion for, uh, for Dota Boys. No, also not incredible, but... Uh, the Breaker more. charging in on the Skyrath very low. Doesn't even use uh, another strike there. Deletes the sky. Though. Now it is mid game, like we saw last game. He's he's got items and he's he's got skills. He's clearly played invoker a lot. Knows what he's doing and uh, knows how to catch back up. Quick pick off on the disruptor. Monkey King Battle Fury went back for the Echo Saber following the Battle Fury. Um. And now with a BKB as well, I'm not sure what 
there's not a lot of options to kill the Monkey King at this point. Even a favorable swap to bring the Monkey King in, in um, not going to make much difference. We see the water park coming out from the Kunkka. Invoker getting low, Lion getting low, Invoker up in the air, maybe to fall soon. Earthshaker still has the Echo Slam. Lion picked off. Earthshaker fissuring off the rest of the dire team. Scarath getting again points back. There's no surviving that one. You can tell Dyer's middle yeah, tower is in turn the way it's being Just destroyed. As I good said. enough at punishing with the uh, the new items, the, the water park, the Ven Jags, and able to chase down with a. Starting to turn things around. You know, and it's funny, um, despite the two for one trade, the experience gain actually fit going to the Radiant. Um, Venge, quite a valuable pickoff at this point. Looking at hero net worth, though, I mean, you've got your spec with a lower net worth than a lion um, 25 minutes into the game. Un unfortunate situation for Dyer to be in. Kunkka's starting to do work in these fights, but I'm just worried that as well as um, spec skills, we, we might not be able to get there. Spec jumping in, chasing the Earthshaker. Earthshaker does go down. Charge onto the Skyrath. Lion to go down too. Monkey King goes in long after his team's already been dropped. It's a pretty good um, Wukong's command down. The swap to cancel the Wukong's command. BKB is out for this Monkey King. Limps back on him. Invoker chasing the Venge Illusion. G Dollar narrowly avoids a boundless strike there. Uh, maybe didn't quite work out for nice stalkers, but I did like to see them go for the more aggressive play now that they've hit some times. Dive in the tier one, forcing a reaction out of Dota boys. I think uh, a little more of that, a little luck, and uh, yeah, really start to swing the game back in the Urshaker also working on his BKB, able to um, secure some better positioning in the water park, um, able to get an ideal Echo Slam off. Venge still has that Midas queued up. I'm very curious to see if we see the Venge go back for this nearly 30 minute Midas. If you're in the vicinity of Dyer's top tower, I put on a heart. That baby is coming down. Yeah, and Monkey King going for a Basher next, which I really like. I feel like though you've got the the Earthshaker and the Lion, they're proving to be um, kind of easy targets early in the fight for Dire. Secures yourself a little bit of lockdown, maybe even in your Wukong's command. Lots of stuff coming onto Punka all at once. Blade Mail up, dealing some damage to the Skyrath, but they've got enough to pop him. Either my eyes are liars, or that's a mega kill. Kunkka pinging out vision, but it only just went up there. Mm. Oh, again, perhaps playing less as a team than we might hope. Here at top, here up. Up. You don't want to be there against this several blinks. Um, we have three blink daggers up on Radiant now. The Invoker, the Lion, and the Earthshaker all. It's kind of funny. Basher finished on Monkey King. Zooming back Dyer's into the spec hitting insured. creeps. Um, standing on his last brick. 73 CS, where the Monkey King was around the 10 minute mark. I mean, this is a rough situation to be in. Gets the Yasha going for the Manta style, but I feel like the specs spent a long time just building the next item. Missed the Earthshaker getting 
picked off at the beginning. Spec goes in, but the Venge saves the spec. Monkey King BKB to avoid the water park. Monkey King gets swapped through the BKB. Spirit Breaker charge onto the Lion. Lion drops. Monkey King getting waved high ground. I don't know if they have the save for him. Nice. 800 gold going to the spec for the Monkey King kill. Unfortunate situation to be in. Yeah, Boker getting X'd up. Not quite sure who's going where. The glimpse and the X combo <laughs> confusing me every fight. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. Very okay, 9,000 experience swing to Dyer from tower. that fight. Spectre very nearly into the top five now. <laughs> and, uh, it's going to be huge for them. Skyrath with an Aether and a Ghost Scepter. Would have loved to have seen a more traditional support item on Look Down Nathan. Maybe a Force Staff or a Glimmer Cape. Maybe even a Yules to break the X. Um, proving to be a big challenge to deal with in these fights. Big Echo Slam onto the Kunkka. Kunkka drops at the beginning of the fight. Monkey King just beating down the space cow. Found himself in no man's land after charging in to save a man who was already dead. And Radiant looking like they're trying to march high ground again. Didn't go so well for them last time, but maybe with a couple of these pickoffs, they're feeling a little more confident. Ice wall. Glimmer on the Disruptor, not able to see him, the tier 3 goes down. I see the full racks go down, 30 seconds, no buyback on this Kunkka. Dyer's middle barracks just fell. Yeah, very good uh, not like that team player bit. there, realizing that uh, the time is here, the time is now. And uh, taking the opportunity. Take a Radiant, perhaps with this advantage, we'll see them make the first venture to Roshan this game. 30 minutes, no Roshan attempts been made yet. Charge not onto the lion, but finds the lion. Spirit Breaker. Ooh. Ooh, the Fissure to set up the Sun Strike. What a combo. No detection for that Spirit Breaker, though. All right, Raiden, you're all here. Are you going, Roshan? Yep. Again, the same. Dota Boy is playing a much more objective focus game. Venge does opt for an Aether Lens rather than the Midas, thank goodness. Um, I think a lot of utility um, brought to the team with the Aether Lens. I mean, we've seen how disruptive some of these swaps have been during the fights, to start the fights, what have you. Um, I really enjoy the item choice. I'm going for a Blink Dagger next, I'm seeing how effective all these Blink Daggers are on Radiant says, hey, I want a Blink Dagger too. Dyer doesn't haul ass and help out that bottom tower, there's not going to be a tower left. Uh, I'm not sure it's the most effective item she could be getting, to be honest. We've already got plenty of uh, arch on our ends. Initiation, she should be able to rely on uh, others' team. I think the supports might be dying to the Tormentor here. They're not careful. Sky? Oh. Yep. Oh, look down, Nathan. Torments of Steel, though. 
All right, what did I miss? A Monkey King using BKB before the Aegis pops. I'm not sure that's the play here. Spirit Breaker charge onto the Monkey King and ooh, Nether Strike canceled by the Tornado. There's no BKB on this Monkey King when he gets up. The Lion King picked off by the Kunkka with a double damage oh, in from the side. Wukong's command. Oh, Swap comes out, but he's still inside his ring. Oh. Kunkka just sort of waltzes away there with the uh, BKB on. Monkey King, really not a lot he can do here. Isolated from his team. Looks like... Dire just probably got a little bit too low on resources to turn the fight. Oh. Picks off the disruptor before the glimpse lands. Unfortunate. You can tell Dyer's middle tower is in trouble from the Not a lot of gas in the tank on Radiant here. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to make the high ground push. I completely missed it. They took an entire set of racks. Yes, it's a much radiant. closer game. It looks like than last one. Only a 10k, 10k gold difference. Yeah, unfortunately, a spec not able to have the impact you might like to hope a specter have. Oh, and I say that the spec and the spirit breaker pick off the lion out of position, not with the team. Yeah, that is that combo, the global combo that we were talking about earlier. You can have as many combos as you want, but this Monkey King is nearly twice as much net worth as a Spectre. The disruptor combo, but I'm not sure it's going to matter for much. Yeah, Charge in. in. All up. Monkey King just BK being TPing out, leaving the Earthshaker to die, the Sky to die, and the Invoker's high ground as well. Not going to make it out. Like get X back, no mana on him? Some signs of life from Dire. Radiant struggling to figure out how to break high ground here. Um, and Aegis is... Uh, they just lost their Aegis. Roshan probably not up for another five minutes or so here. At least. Gonna get the spec. Mental Spear. All these... Heroes, some time to build up those next items, making every fight a little bit harder. Gold for me. Wow, and suddenly the gold difference is only a 3k lead. Cut significantly down there. 2k. Oh, look at these graphs. You see them all dip quickly down. And it looks like registered Night Stalkers are actually higher in the win probability uh, for the first time. And like five or six minutes. <laughs> yeah, the experience uh, leveling out, very concerning. At one point we saw a spec at the bottom of the hero level chart, now no longer the case. Um, <clears throat> and the Monkey King opting for, keeps on queuing up different items no here, now, going for the Abyssal Blade, but did not opt for the Silver Edge, so there's no break currently on Radiant, and no one looking to build one in the near future here. Monkey King on the side, you just lost your tier 2, huge Echo Slam into the Tornado, Wukong's command trying to get it out. Wukong isn't here for a swap, leaving is for us to die, canceling the Wukong command. BKB putting put on that disruptor, not having tags to the Ogre Seal Totem and nice blink. Looks like the disruptor might be a sacrifice. Trying to deny to the creeps. Oh, nice try. So close. Solid effort. I'm surprised, you know, the Venge was in position, saw two of her cores getting gone on with the Echo Slam, but still elected to save the swap for the Monkey King ult, maybe deciding that that was going to be a bigger problem. Uh, it has been the tale so far this game, and fairly effective for most of it as well. Not surprised that that's uh, the game plan. Maybe it's being a little bit too rigid and now they're figuring out this. Bye -bye. Now they have an easy way of uh, getting those buildings if none of the heroes are alive. Don't look now, Force the fort. Not a bad thing to do. Force a Kunkka and a Disruptor buyback. 
Uh, I think you're happy to just walk away. That's radiant. Um, Monkey King, though, I want to comment. Having a little bit of challenge here, chasing down the enemy team in these fights, um, not getting a lot of successful bashes, didn't opt for the harpoon, didn't opt for a defusal, so um, after the initial primal spring, uh, we've seen the disruptor just walk away. Well, one thing I wanted to point out that you mentioned that they don't have any break for the Spectre, but on the other side, they don't really have any answer for the Monkey King Butterfly here. It's going to be kind of difficult for these heroes to really knock him down outside of that initial nuke damage, which game goes on. He's going to get more and more HP with those stats. It looks like they're moving in on the Invoker. We see the Nether Strike coming in. The entire team collapsing on him. Good for staff. The Monkey King all we see... <laughs> Boat coming in, he's sitting there trying to fight everyone. He's just in the middle of the Torn Storm, doesn't have BKB. He's getting stunned by the Spectre Bash here. Oh, and the Spirit Breaker coming in, that Ocarine Core getting put into play, killing the Monkey King, get a buyback from the Invoker. Ag's Earthshaker being brought back, bashed, killed, dead. Hacking at limbs, blood spraying everywhere. Seems like Dire Dire's Light game is well and truly here. Punko with a quick tip in there as well. Starting to feel himself a little bit. 12,000 experience going to Dire. Um, Radiant just struggling to close this out and the graph just falling off a cliff. Yeah, I'm looking at this, uh, the fight recap here. You see that the Kunkka put in a ton of damage with the boat, Torn Storm, Tidal Waves, Tide Bringers. Uh, Radiant really just didn't have a way of responding. These BKB timers are getting shorter and shorter. The Invoker looked like he got almost no spells off there before he died. Invoker out of spell. position. This is going to be another dead Invoker. This is going to be his dieback. He's gone for almost a full two minutes. I don't know, Joe. It looked bad for a second when I popped back in, but uh, things keep on going the way that they're headed. I think we're in for a game three. Yeah, the Radiant just really struggling, figuring out how to get high ground, take those objectives. I mean, we've seen the crazy displacement capabilities of the dire spells, and it makes it a difficult thing. Well, high ground pushes are always going to be tough. We're seeing uh, Dire taking an attempt here. Um, this is an opportunity. The lion magic missile catches Whoa. the lion and the monkey king. Monkey king trying to get the Rukong's command out. Hit up. Oh. No, not even able to get the BKB off. Echo Slam onto the Spirit Breaker. Kunkka with a refresher on. Doesn't have enough mana for anything though. Got a buyback in the sky. Oh, good fissure. The spell. <laughs> Earthshaker walking away with less than 60 health. Oh, so close out of the Monkey King there. Just barely misses the Boundless Strike. Still chasing after the Spectre, uh, but it looks like he's out of spells. Nope. Hopping after, we see... And there's Earthshaker, Earthshaker going in. in. He says, wait, 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 no, come back, come back. Oh, Boundless Strike and a Fissure, but... A nice disruptor, kinetic field, saving the specter, keeping the game going. Kunkka, outside of his base. <laughs> Going down the waterworks, saying, no, I don't really want to fight right now. Have fun. Hope you brought a towel. And, yeah, like you said, Invoker was dead for two minutes. Now back alive, Radiant still have all their racks, only about two... 500 damage dealt to the tier 3. But Spectre is almost all the way to a Scotty, which will substantially hinder the Monkey King's ability to lifesteal here. Even looking at that, he's got the Satanic queued up. Uh, three Tangos in the backpack at the moment. <laughs> yeah. There are also another six Tangos on Look Down Nathan. Um, I'm not sure your Monkey King monkey wants to eat a salad right now, friend. <laughs> Maybe uh, trying to make sure that the Monkey King does not have any slots available for this uh, roach that they look like they're trying to take. 
Dyer opting to go for their Tormentor. Um, well, maybe not. Find enough damage to take it. No, no skins on Dyer. Able to see this Roshan happening. Well, putting it on the Monkey King. Cheese still in the pit. Okay, they didn't pull a Lips Gaming incident. The uh, buyback status here. The only people with buyback are the Earthshaker and the Spectre. So these next fights can be the deciding ones. Well, we've seen Radiant try to make their high ground several times this game. All overwhelmingly unsuccessful um will they make a pickoff before trying to go high ground that's what i would like to see they are smoked up except for the monkey king disruptor out of base here still no buyback on him for another minute 30. i am not a betting man unless it's basketball yes. football horse racing rugby cricket or curling but if I was, I'd bet on Radiance. Yeah, if uh, Dyer can wait out both Disruptor and the Kunkka, we'll have buyback in another minute 30. So we just need to stall out for a little bit longer, and then they'll be in a much safer position. Spirit Breaker doing a good job of keeping sidelines pushed out, keeping the, the Radiance at bay. And now has a full Ags completed with that Octarine core. I mean, playing into this is just so annoying it doesn't matter if you have bkbs there's sometimes it feels like there's really nothing you can do once the sp is at this late game stage and there's also the added benefit of him being in position four so you still have all the farm all the utility going on in your position three bench dire sitting high ground Radiant starting to walk up, going on the Kunkka. I'm not sure that's your initiation target. Wukong's commands out. Are we going to see the swap to cancel it like we've seen so many times oh, yeah. before? Yep, immediately. Once again, the Monkey King popping BKB before the Aegis pops. I'm not sure this is the play. The Echo Slam doesn't do a thing. Monkey, Monkey King now caught out. Oh, it looks like they're going to be taking the Invoker too. He's down. Earthshaker buy back in here. No BKB on the Monkey. Getting bashed up both by the Spectre, the Waterworks, Spirit the Breaker. There's nothing you can do. Yep. Earthshaker might want to hightail it out of there. No buyback. Ooh, yeah. Reading no, in a rough it. way. Invoker, buyback available in 50 seconds, 160 gold. Man, if you're dire here. I mean, uh, do you think they're just making the call? Push down mid, see what you can get? No reason not to. Creeps a little ways out. Still got a tier two mid. They don't have the best tower pusher, so this is going to be a little bit slow. That's it for Radiance Middle Tower. We'll never forget you. Go ahead. Fort being used here. Swapping the lion. Earthshaker, you're a little close to the sun there, friend. You don't have buyback either. Lion does have the buyback, at least. He's got to use it. They got the Earthshaker with the X marks. No. Nope. BKB, BKB off cooldown the second he would have been pulled back. Now he doesn't have it. No, I'll see the. Spearbreaker charging really into the base. Yeah, Fear Breaker has buyback for him. Vector has buyback, Kunk has buyback. All of Dyer have buyback currently. I think they're in a good position. 14k ahead. Unfortunately, I'm in a bad position. I gotta go eat dinner. But maybe this game will still be going when I come back. <laughs> Enjoy your dinner, Rico. Thanks for uh... Thanks, y'all. We'll have to catch up on this average. This is exciting. Absolutely. Dark planet very, very safe. Maybe safer than they need to, but they know that they've been winning every fight that's been happening in their own base. But they might as well just 
keep it going, get that Spectre late game. Monkey King opting for the Satanic, getting rid of the Echo Saber. Um, no Abyssal yet. Look down Nathan, able to skate some dire heroes out with the Invis rune. They're all right there. Spirit Breaker caught out, hasn't gotten the Bulldoze off yet. Might be an opportunity to get a clean pick off on the Spirit Breaker, who does have buyback though. Oh, Spirit Breaker getting out with 60 HP. Very unfortunate for the Radiant and the Skyrath. Oh, too far in. Yeah, not sure I'm a fan of the additional lifesteal on the Monkey King. I'm not sure, you know, that's the situation we're going to be encountering. Um, maybe we would like to see some more raw damage, maybe a Scotty, something to tank up, add more damage, a bit of a slow so you can chase heroes down a little better. I think at this point we've, we've reached the, the, the point of the game where Spectre is enough of a problem that you might want Silver Edge to break her. Not seeing one out on the side of, uh, side of Radiant. Dire, they get some clean fights, but Radiant still has all their barracks. Um... Radiant's strongest high ground defense item, just their respawn timers right now. Invoker opting for an Octarine core, dealing with a little bit of inventory issue. If you're a fan of Radiant's top tower, I'd shut my eyes right now. Spirit Breaker, 6,000 gold in the bank, nothing queued up yet. Catch the Kunkka. Wukong's command huge pops the Kunkka almost immediately. Venge goes down as well. They kill the Venge Illusion. Lots of BKBs committed on Radiant. Dire committing a couple buybacks when there's no immediate threat. Are they looking to turn this fight here and now? Looks like. Another strike and charge onto the Earthshaker. Earthshaker getting low, does go down. The line caught out in a position he doesn't want to be in. Drops nearly immediately. Monkey King, BKB TP. Invoker, trying to ghost walk out of there, revealed by some dust. And it expired. Just about able to make it out. But one of only two from his team that does. How's Roche doing? We got another Roche up and maybe a minute. Yeah, different points. Both teams seem like they're ahead enough to be the ones pressuring for Roche. See what happens by the time he actually respawns. Oh, and yeah. Marshall, you need to sit there maybe another 20 seconds. I'm showing up momentarily. And there it is. Will they turn back and notice they were all just there? They're waiting around. They're definitely ready to, to do this rush. Uh, it's going to be very strong on either of their heroes that have no buyback. I'm waiting for this Venge to Wave of Terror Roshan to reveal that it spawned. There it is. <laughs> of course, this means third rush. They do get a free Ags as well. Not sure who that's. Go on. I think it's a disruptor. No, you you get the static storm that mutes items. That's it immediately puts all of um Radiant's BKBs to waste. So was a fight. Spirit 
Spirit Breaker toying with the supports in the back line. Missile Blade onto the Invoker. Invoker drops, has buyback. Echo Slam down, provides a little bit of control, momentary reprieve. Does it give the Earth Shaker enough space to exit the fight? Does not. Invoker back in. Monkey King still has the Satanic, if he can pop it. Ice wall down. Not sure that's going to be enough. The X marks on the Invoker. Invoker who just bought back. Getting low, that should be the end of the Invoker. Skyroth went back in as well, trying to kill this Venge. Ooh, Monkey King gets a what cheeky pickoff. Beginning of the end for the Radiant. Creeps dire in sure, the uh, dire base, though. Tier 4 down, in fact. Oh, goodness, Dire. I, I think this is a mistake. They're going to finish the Roche before they go high ground. They should know that. Radiant doesn't have buyback now. This is precious time. Uh, I think the play was, you know, you, you see what buildings you can take, and as they respawn, you safely go back to Roshan. Um, time's just being wasted here, I feel. Alright, we'll see who the Ags goes to. Yeah, the Disruptor. She's still in there? Lips Gaming, is this you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not the ages gone left behind <laughs> not this time three radiant heroes up to defend their base for another 50 seconds still a tier 2 up top lane um, if radiant places safely they might just lose two lanes of racks Earthshaker trying to fissure things off slow down the push a little bit don't look now but radiant's bottom tower Radiant's bottom tower is a pile of dust and gravel. Dyer's using Radiant's bottom barrel. Not bothering to join his team until they're all uh, seems oh, pushing in top. Pretty cold move, Dyer. Now where are the Radiant creeps gonna sleep? Now team back. Large creep wave pushing in top here. I'm not sure it's gonna be enough to take out this tier three. I heard a swap. Onto the lion. Big echo slam in. Kunkka getting very low. Kunkka drops. Some lockdown on the spec as well. Has Aegis. Oh, finger onto a spec illusion. Unfortunate. Oh, disruptor. Invisible but still stunned. Spec getting low. They get spec once, will they have enough to get spec a second time? The disruptor being picked off under the ice wall. Spec mantas here. Lion battling this disruptor who just might live. Spec will not. 100 seconds has buyback. Radiant down two set of racks. This game is back and forth and back and forth. So hard to tell who's gonna win each fight. I don't even know who's gonna show up to cast the next five minutes. Will Rico return? Will Coop return? Will Mina's voice make a miraculous comeback? Will the silent Tyler come off mute? I don't know. Anything could happen, Slug. Hong Kong's command. Oh, huge. Ruffle 25 disruptor roll with the Ags. Monkey King tries to TP, forgets maybe about the Spirit Breaker he's going against. Uses the Tannic to regain some HP, but there's a lot of damage coming out onto this Monkey King. Should have enough to finish him off and no buyback on that Monkey King for two minutes now. Creep's already pushing into Radiant's base. Spirit Breaker charging all the way across the map. Give a shit, huh? GG is oh, called. 
know that they can't defend, not with uh, just two heroes. Unless... Is it fake GG? Ooh. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make an announcement in, uh, in Mage League to make sure everyone's aware that GG means GG. Yeah. It sounds like it's just a little little miscommunication there. Nothing uh, malicious. Maybe, maybe one player wanted to give it, one player wanted to, to finish it out. Yeah. Excellent to see the uh, slow but steady comeback from Reggie. Going to see a game three here. Absolutely. Well, you guys may see a game three. I am a.